So good afternoon and good evening to you. I know some of us are in different places. Um, so I think that we'll, we'll just go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's Blue Flag Control Visit Training Session for Marinas. So first off, we would like to begin by acknowledging uh, the land. Now it depends where we are. Now I'm over here in Vancouver on the West Coast. So I'd like to acknowledge the land on which we gather here today is the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, including the territories of the tsleil Squamish and Musqueam First Nations. And then Elise, go ahead and give your Indigenous so, land acknowledgement. Thank you, Sadie. So I am here in Toronto. So I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather here today is that of the Michisagi and Anishinaabeg, specifically the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. From time immemorial, they have been and still are stewards of the land and waters of this area. Through programs at Swim Drink Fish, we've begun and committed to fostering a better relationship with Indigenous communities in order to continue stewardship of the waters which we all rely on. Thank you so much, Elise. So we'd also like to take a moment to recognize and thank you so much for volunteering your time today and in the field for your control visit. Because of your help, we're able to succeed in creating a swimmable, drinkable, and fishable future together. And we are absolutely thrilled about this. And um, basically at Swim Drink Fish, we believe that together we can create a network of people who are working towards a common goal because no one person, organization, or city can fix water quality issues, but together we can make sure that the waters across shorelines in Canada continue to be swimmable, drinkable, and fishable for future generations. So before I introduce our speaker who will be conducting the training portion today, um, I'll just go over a couple of housekeeping topics. Now, number one, this uh, training uh, session is being recorded. Um, so you can always go back to it after the fact. I'll be sending it a little bit later today. Um, uh, we also have the chat box here and we really invite your, your comments and questions. And we'll have several breaks throughout the presentation, which are great opportunities for us to answer your questions. Um, I've also muted everyone's microphone, and if anyone else hops in, I will be muting your microphone just so that there's no background noise during the presentation. Now, we also have this form here, which is the control visit form. I'll just put it in the chat box right here, and if you're watching it live, just go ahead and visit that link right here, and that way you can follow along with the, with the control visit form, which is what we'll be exploring today during this presentation. And so finally, I will introduce Elise, who is gonna to start today's presentation. So go ahead, Elise. Oh, I think you're still on mute. <laughs> thank you, I am still on mute. So thank you, Sadie. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everyone who's listening in this evening or this afternoon to the Blue Flag Volunteer Control Visit training session for Blue Flag Marinas. So this is the fourth and final training session, but these videos are being recorded. So if you happen to want a refresher, we will be sharing them and you can rewatch them at your convenience. I'll introduce you to Swim Drink Fish. We are a charity working towards swimmable, drinkable future, swimmable, drinkable, fishable water for everyone. We do this by using citizen science and communications technologies to inspire people just like you and to know how to safeguard your local waters. Blue Flag Canada is one of our newest initiatives and it's helping connect millions of people to environmentally friendly beaches and marinas across the country. So we're really lucky to have Blue Flag Canada um, in our country. Firstly, thank you all for signing up um, to conduct a control visit at a marina for the 2020 summer. You hopefully have all watched the orientation video that was sent out by email on July 23rd. But if you didn't receive this orientation video, please send us an email and we'll definitely share it again with you. This training video is the second step on your journey to completing your control visit in August at your selected blue flag marina. So during this training session, you will learn a little bit about the blue flag program across the world and in Canada. And we will also provide you with an overview of how this one day of volunteering will look like. Then we'll go through the detailed questions that must be answered during your control visit at the marina. So this is a recap from the orientation video. So I'll move through this swiftly. But the Foundation for Environmental Education, also called FEE or FEE, 
which is located in Denmark, developed the Blue Flag program and criteria to guide beaches and marinas towards best practices for the environment, water, and people. Blue Flag certification demonstrates a community's commitment to providing a clean, safe, and accessible waterfront. Around the world, Blue Flag communities are respected for being among the best places to live, work, study, and play. So we're so lucky that we have Blue Flag marinas and beaches in Canada. FEE is an international non-governmental nonprofit organization that supports and helps manage the Blue Flag program across the world. The Blue Flag program started in France in 1985 and has been implemented in Europe since 1987 and in areas outside of Europe since 2001 when South Africa joined. Today, Blue, Fl Blue Flag has become a truly global program with an ever increasing number of countries participating in it. At the start of the 2020 year, Swim Drink Fish became the national operator of the Blue Flag program. The Blue Flag program is the leading program promoting environmental education and sustainable management for beaches and marinas worldwide. So the Blue Flag is a highly recognizable symbol. Currently there are 4,664 4, flags flying in 46 countries across the world, including Canada. In Canada this year, blue flags were awarded to 29 beaches and nine marinas for the 2020 summer season. And you can see in the map here, they're mainly located in Ontario, but there's also beaches in Quebec and New Brunswick, and then marinas in Halifax and New Brunswick as well, and Ontario. So why is blue flag so trusted and respected across the world? Each flag is awarded for one year only. So everyone must reapply each year to prove that it continues to meet the blue flag criteria. The criteria are divided into four important categories, environmental education, water quality, environmental management, and safety and services. These criteria are there to challenge local authorities and the marina managers and operators to achieve high standards in each of the four categories. So for marinas within these four categories, there are 38 criteria that blue flag marinas must meet. And we'll go over the criteria when we go over the control visit form. The second way that uh, we maintain the credibility of the blue flag symbols at beaches and marinas is by conducting control visits. So this is why it's so um, helpful to us that we have volunteers willing to conduct these visits for us. By using a standardized blue flag marina control visit form, you'll visit your assigned marina in August and check to see if the blue flag criteria are being met. Control visits are essential to ensuring that blue, the blue flag symbol remains a trusted and respected symbol in Canada. We do want to emphasize that control visits for blue flag sites are done by volunteers across the world. It doesn't require an expert background. You don't need to be a marina manager or have been even visited a marina before. So don't worry about that. And we'll go through all the criteria thoroughly so you're prepared when you head out there. It's a really amazing way to become part of a global network of people learning about their local marinas and waterfronts. Uh, but if at the end of this training session, you have any questions or concerns about completing the control visit, we're here to help you and guide you and support you on your journey. Uh, we don't want this to be an arduous task. We want this to be enjoyable and something that is fulfilling when you come out of it. It's important that you understand why we do control visits at, visits at blue flag sites and blue flag marinas and beaches. The control visit you'll be doing is important because they help ensure that the blue flag standards are being maintained at all the certified marinas this year. They're, conduct, they're conducted to help identify and report areas of non-compliance to the marine operator themselves, Blue Flag Canada, Swim Drink Fish, and also Blue Flag International and Fee. It is important to keep in mind though, that the control visits are not meant to, the poli to police the marina operator. Instead, the vis visits are meant to help maintain and enhance the standards at the marina. So they should be a really collaborative effort with yourself and the marina manager and swim drink fish, and it should be an enjoyable experience for everyone taking part. So that's something to keep in mind. There are other benefits to doing a control visit. So when, you submit your control visit form to Swim Drink Fish. We will assess your responses against the Blue Flag program criteria. Oh, welcome. These control visits are important because they help improve communication between Swim Drink Fish, Blue Flag Canada, and the marine operator themselves. 
So at the end of the summer, the information you gathered will help us produce a short report for the marina, highlighting its best management practices and also helping identify any improvements that need to be made in order to maintain the blue flag standard for the following year. So during a visit, you'll go through each question on the control visit form while walking the marina and filling in observations. The questions on the control visit form refer to blue flag criteria. We do encourage you to give additional comments and observations either through a notebook or an email to us. And it's highly recommended that you emphasize good observations. So the best management practices that you're seeing at the marina, but also provide us swim, drink, fish with some suggestions on how the marina could further improve um, its best management practices or other items that you're noticing at the marina. So as we all know, um, the, the world has changed significantly due to the COVID-19 pandemic and Swim Drink Fish has taken measures to ensure the public safety of everyone. So staff, including uh, volunteers as well, like you, and then pu the public that we're gonna be interacting with in all our programs, including Blue Flag. So before you begin your control visit, there are a couple things that we're gonna need. You must su submit the signed COVID-19 agreement that will be shared with everyone after this training ses session. And you will also have to complete a COVID-19 questionnaire that's provided in the agreement. And in this questionnaire, you must answer no or none of the above to all the questions in order to do your control visit. So these questions are like, have you traveled outside the country in the past 14 days? Do you have any COVID-19 symptoms? Has someone in your, does someone in your household have any symptoms? Or does, has someone in your household left the country as well? If you have any concerns about COVID-19 symptoms, you can complete the Government Ontario COVID assessment or the federal assessment that's available online. Um, and then here's some guidance on what you should bring when you go to your control visit. This is in relation to COVID-19, but also is good practice uh, regardless of that. But bring as few personal items as possible, especially if you're gonna be working indoors. For marina control visits, you'll likely have to go inside the marina office. So it's good to not bring a bunch of stuff and carry it around. Bring your own water bottle. Marinas are notoriously hot because there's very limited shade on the docks. And if you're spending a bunch of time out on the docks, you can get very warm. So we wanna make sure you have water with you. Uh, bring sun protection as well, a hat, sunglasses, um, if you can, bring your own pen and paper if you want. You can take notes on this. Also bring your smartphone because the form will be loaded on there. And then if you're tra when traveling to and from the marina, please practice social distancing or physical distancing. So now on to the good stuff. Uh, so when you have your day selected and your marina selected, the, what you're going to do First is submit that COVID-19 form and questionnaire to Swim, Drink, Fish before you head into the field. Um, and then you're gonna arrive at the marina and meet the marina off, um, operator or a staff member from the marina. All the marinas have requested that someone attend the control visit with uh, the blue flight with one whoever's conducting the control visit. Uh, this could be the manager itself or staff who's attending, uh, who's taking care of the marina at that point. In some cases, you may conduct the control visit alone, um, but you can always ask staff for help while you're filling out the form. So on the selected day, you'll arrive at the Blue Flag Marina at the specified time. Uh, we want you to bring your phone uh, and have the control visit form saved so that you can take pictures. Um, if you don't have a smartphone, this is not a barrier. We want to make sure that uh, everyone has a chance to be able to go out and do a control visit. So a hard copy can be used. Uh, and if you have a camera, that's also great to bring along with you. So you'll arrive at the marina. You'll start filling out your form based on what you're seeing at the Blue Flag Marina. We also ask that you take lots of pictures while conducting the site visit. This is great for social media, but it's also really good um, because it helps us get eyes and ears on the ground. So you're really helping us get a better picture of what's going on at the marina if you're able to take photos. Once you've completed your control visit, you'll submit the photos to Swim, Drink, Fish. And the form that I'm talking about is a Google form. So luckily this form will automatically be uploaded to Swim, Drink, Fish as you work through your control visit. So you don't have to worry about sending it to us. We should get the results right away. The form is made up of yes or no uh, questions, short answers. 
as well as uh, lists for selecting items that you're seeing. So I'm flipped over into the form here. If you're able to open the link, uh, you'll see this first page. This is just background information. And you'll see there's page one of six. So there's six sections uh, and they are environmental education. They are all the categories and then a final section for comments. So this is an example. This is yes, no, this is a short answer. And then this is here where you would select elements that you're seeing. So they're just check marks like that. So if you can open that and follow along, it is really helpful because it's uh, we're going to move right into the criteria you're going to be looking for when you're visiting. So it's, as I mentioned, broken up into six sections, background information, environmental education uh, for blue flag criteria, water quality at the marina, environmental management criteria fulfilled at the marina, the quality of the safety and services offered at the marina, and then a final section that offers you a place to add final remarks about the site visit and also provide any feedback to Swim, Drink, Fish and the Blue Flag program. This is the first year that we're doing control visits with volunteers. So we would love feedback from everyone participating. This really helps us uh, get a better sense of what we can improve on and what we can do better. So we would love some feedback. So now we're going to go into what you're going to be filling out on the form. The first page is background information. So this is pretty self-explanatory. The date and hour of the visit, the name of the marina, the municipality you're in, your name, the weather during the site visit, and then also if the site manager or staff met you for the visit. And uh, you would also write their name down for us so we can keep track. And then you're gonna go right into environmental education. So the first thing you're going to look for, and hopefully it's really obvious when you arrive, is if the blue flag is flying. So if it's on its flagpole. If it's not flying, we need to identify the reason for why it is not flying. It's typically if there's non-compliance to blue flag criteria and the marine manager would likely take it down um, and be aware of why they have to take it down. So it could be something like the toilet tank uh, pump out station isn't working for some reason. So the flag would have to come down for a reason like that. Um, and then you would want to check the flag to make sure that the blue flag is the current year. So because blue flag are awarded on an annual basis, each flag is stamped with the year. So this year it's going to be the 2020 year. So you're going to make sure that they have the 2020 year flying on their blue flag. Then you're going to look for if the marina has a blue flag information board. So if you look at the deck, the slide here, this is Tall Pines Marina information board. It's a really beautiful board. And we're gonna go over what you're gonna look for on this board. So I'm gonna to flip to the next slide. But what you're gonna to wanna to check is if there are understandable pictograms used on the information board. So I'm gonna go back. This is what I mean by pictograms here. Pictograms are really important because they help visitors who maybe don't speak English, they're international visitors, um, English, or they don't speak English or French, um, understand the board and understand where all the facilities are for safety reasons for the bathroom and information center parking. So they're really important that they have pictograms on the marina map. You're also going to want to check if the correct blue flag lo logo is used. And you can see here, this is the correct blue flag logo. Welcome to Tall Pines Marina. There's also a demo logo in the form itself, so you can reference it. And then you're going to want to check to see is there information about the blue flag program itself on the board. So this includes a brief explanation of the program as well as the criteria that make up the blue flag program. And then you wanna check that the correct contact information is on the board. So I'm just gonna flip back here. Uh, Environmental Defense used to run the blue flag program. Swim, Drink, Fish took over the program in 2020. So we've designed stickers to cover this information here with our information and they've all been sent out. So hopefully by the time you arrive, the, stick, the sticker has been stuck on the board and we have the Swim Drink Fish phone number, email, uh, as well as any other contact information available. So you're gonna check to make sure that that's there. And then you're gonna look for a code of conduct for the marina. This is typically on the information board, but it also might be available in the marina office on hard copy, so a paper form. 
And then you're going to want to check to see if there's environmental information boards around the marina as well as on the information board. So this is an example of a board you might see. It may not be on the blue flag information board, but there might be nice boards elsewhere at the marina with environmental information about the surrounding areas. So if you do see any more boards like this or boards about invasive species or anything like that, you do want to try and take a photo of them for us. And then you're going to want to see if the marina is promoting the blue flag individual blue flags for boat owners. So what this means is boat owners can sign on to that code of conduct and receive their own little blue flag that they can hang on their boat. So the marina should be offering this. You can check with staff um, at the marina office or any staff that are out on the docks. They would likely know if it's being offered. And then you're going to want to check to see, does the marina have information on safety precautions posted at the marina? So this might be on the information board, but there are likely other types of signage that you would look for. So signage for fire extinguishers, signage for safety uh, equipment available at the marinas, what to do in an emergency if there's a spill or any other items. So you're gonna look around for the signage like that. And if you do see the signage, grab a photo of it for us. And then you're gonna wanna ask the marina, manager or check out the information boards to see if there are environmental education activities. The blue flag program requires that at least three distinct environmental education activities are offered at the marina or in the municipality or community. So this could include a tree planting event or learning about the local uh, fowler's toad near the marina. However, due to COVID-19, it's up to the discretion of the marina manager and of course the city or the local region uh, to go through with these environmental education activities. Many of them have been shifted into passive activities, so it could be an online scavenger hunt or items like that. So if they're not offering these activities, they've been cancelled because of COVID-19, please just specify that in the form to let us know that, oh, the activities were planned, but due to COVID-19, uh, they are not going forward with them. And then you're going to look at the water quality at the marina. So you're going to walk up and down the docks, look between the berths where the boats are docked, and you're going to check to see if the marina water is visibly clean. So you want to check to see that there's no sewage, litter, oil film, any weird odors that you're smelling, foam, scum, uh, aquatic plants, ex excessive amounts of aquatic plants, discoloration or floatable. So discoloration could be bright green. This could be an indication of blue-green algae. Um, and then sewage, you typically look for items like condoms or tampon applicators floating in the water. If you're seeing any evidence of this, of these items, take a photo of it. If you're not seeing any evidence of them, take a photo anyway, because we love to, to see the clean water. So either or, or we love a photo of the water um, for this cri criteria here. So I've just gone through a ton of information. So uh, I'm going to take a break to see if there are any questions from our listeners. So if you want, you can go ahead and use the chat box. So far, we don't have any questions, but you're welcome to throw some in now. And welcome to the two people who weren't sort of at the introduction, Finn and Kendall. I'm Sadie, if you don't know who I am. Okay, it and seems like we don't have any questions so far. Okay, perfect. So um, we this is recorded, so you can, we will be sharing it with you in case you want to rewatch it. Um, can we get high school volunteers for this? Um, Definitely, we would have to do a training session with um, the person, but it's definitely, or if, if they want to come along with you, definitely, we love to encourage youth and children to learn about their local marinas and beaches. So definitely, we, we would love to, to see that. So Kendall has a great question. Will there be any chance, that, chance this will be brought over to BC anytime soon? Yes, <laughs> we're working on it. As of right now, we don't have any um, blue flag beaches or marinas uh, in BC, but we're we're looking we're exploring some potential sites. And so, one of the reasons that we invited people who don't have any blue flag beaches or marinas near them 
are because we are looking to have some feasibility visits. So you can still have a form very similar to this one that you take out into the field and you just sort of go through it. But there will be some things different. You know, you won't necessarily be meeting with the marina manager, but it'll be a great experience to sort of explore um, to explore the area and see if it would be a good potential site and if it meets some of these standards. Um, do you have anything else to add to that one, Elise? No, that was perfect. Um, and definitely, yeah, so. Definitely <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no worries. <laughs> I think there's a one second delay for me. And then Finn um, was asking if we could get high school volunteer hours for this because Finn is in high school. <laughs> so we do keep track of volunteer hours. So we'd be happy to sign off on anything to make sure that you, you get those tracked. Definitely. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to move forward. Um, into environmental management. So we've gone through environmental education and water quality, and now we're looking at environmental management at the marina. So the first thing you want to look for is, are there garbage bins available at the marina? So you're gonna do a scan. Sometimes they may be in a, an area off to the side in a gated area. So you're gonna wanna ask staff or the marina manager where the garbage bins might be. be. Then you want to check to see if the garbage bins appear to be regularly emptied. So if they're overflowing and there's garbage everywhere on the floor, then it's likely that they're not emptied enough. And then you're going to want to check to see if there are enough garbage bins at the marina. If they're overflowing, again, this could be an indication that there aren't enough garbage bins available. So you're going to want to take a photo of the state of the garbage bins, whether they're perfect and empty or half empty or overflowing. So regardless, we wanna know what the garbage bins look like. And then you're gonna check to see if the marina has facilities for recyclable waste materials. So we're looking for bins that can take at least three different streams of recycling. So this could include glass, plastic, cardboard, metal, any other items in the recycling stream. At minimum three, if there's more, that's awesome. So compost as well, we would want to know if they're composting. Again, you want to look to see if the recycling bins appear to be regularly emptied. So if they're overflowing and all over the place, this is a sign that they might not be regularly emptied or there might not be enough available. So now this is another really important criteria as part of Blue Flag. Blue Flag marinas must be able to have, must be able to receive three different types of relevant hazardous waste. This is really important because it helps avoid hazardous waste from being dumped into the water or onto the local environment. So if there's a place where marina tenants and visitors can dispose of their hazardous waste, they will mo they will way are way more likely to use it than to go out and dump it into the environment. So relevant hazardous waste at marinas include oil or reused oil, antifreeze, any metal scrapings from working on boats, paint and metal scrapings as well, batteries, anti-fouling cleaning products, and any other items used for cleaning the boat. Then you wanna check to see if the hazardous waste disposal area is environmentally safe. So if it's stored up on a concrete pad or in a storage building, and that it's away from children. So the public can't access this, these hazardous waste materials. So typically it'll be in a separate part of the marina and you'll have to ask permission from staff to, to check it out. And then you're gonna wanna see, does the hazardous waste storage area appear to be regularly emptied? So if it's not clean or if there's items that are spilling, this is something that you definitely want to flag and take a photo of. And we wanna emphasize there's no need for you to uh, say to the site manager, hey, this needs to be cleaned up. You're not meeting criteria. This is something Swim Drink Fish will do. You just need to observe, gather as much information about the, the situation as possible and report back to us. So if at any point you're seeing things that you might think are an issue, before you head out, you'll be provided with my phone number. So you can always text me or call me if you want to flag anything. I'll be always available when you're out in the field. 
So again, you wanna take a photo of the hazardous waste storage area and then submit that to us. So now we're looking at uh, two other aspects. So is there bilge water pumping facilities? This is a guideline criteria and it's uh, a facility that allows boats to pump out uh, oily residue <clears throat> and water from their boat. Not all marinas will have this and that's okay. If they don't have a bilge water pumping facility, uh, you can say no, it's not a imperative criteria. If you don't know what a bilge water pumping facility is, that's totally fine. You don't need to know what it is. What you'll do is you'll head to a staff member who might be on the docks or in the marina office and simply ask, do you have a bilge water pumping facility? If they say yes, then you'll say, oh, can you direct me to it? You'll head out and take a photo. If they say no, you'll just say great, no on the form. The next item, are there toilet tank waste reception facilities present? So this is an imperative criteria. Blue flag marinas must have a place where boats with toilets on them, or else they're also called heads, are able to be pumped out. This is so we avoid boats dumping gray water or sewage into the local water bodies. So blue flag marinas must have a toilet tank waste reception. This could be a mobile toilet tank. So it could be a boat that comes and visits the marina and pumps out onto their boat to bring it to shore. Or it could be a permanent toilet tank pump out at the marina itself. So you can see here in the image, this is typically what a pump out station would look like. Yes, we're open, pump out station on the side, and a boat can come up and empty their tank into, into this tank here, and then it will be offloaded and brought to the local wastewater treatment facility. So again, if you don't know what a pump out station looks like or where it might be, you'd simply ask staff members and they will put, point you in the right direction. And throughout your whole time, you're going to keep an eye out for um, how well maintained the buildings are. So if the docks are hazardous or steps are hazardous or there's places that um, could people could potentially trip and fall or it's slippery. Uh, you wanna flag this and take photos of it. We wanna ensure that the public and the visitors are able to safely navigate around the marina. And then you're gonna to wanna to check to see if there's any unauthorized pollution coming from the buildings or equipment. This includes boats, so it could be a leaky boat that's maybe spilling into the waterway or any type of pipes coming out of the pier walls or docks. And if you see something going into the water and you don't really know what it is, just take a photo uh, and potentially a video if you can and submit that to us and then we'll follow up with the, the site manager. And then if you want, if you're gonna wanna check to see if there's any large extension or rebuilding taking place at a marina, part of blue flag and also Canadian regulations is if there's any extension or building occurring in water, there has to be an environmental assessment and permits also has to have to be acquired through the Navigable Waters Protection Act. So on their application for the following year, they would have to submit to us an environmental assessment. So if you're seeing any work being done in the water or at the marina, definitely mark that down and take a photo of it so we can follow up with the site manager. And then you're going to want to check to see if the natural areas are being preserved. So this means, you know, any treed areas within the marina property, any dunes or sensitive habitat that might be nearby to the marina that you can easily access through the marina. Uh, you would want to take a photo of it and you want to check if there's any litter in these natural areas or if it's being trampled by visitors uh, and just keep your eye out to see how well these natural areas are being preserved. And then you wanna to check to see if there's sustainable transportation available at the marina. So some marinas actually have bike rental programs, which is really cool. So if they're doing that, that's definitely a best management practice that we wanna highlight uh, and promote at the marina. Uh, any trails or bike racks also indicate that there's sustainable transportation at the marina. Also walking trails and public transport as well. So if there is a bus stop nearby, and visitors can easily access the marina without having to drive there. Then you're gonna head over to the bathrooms. If you don't know where they are, you're gonna ask uh, site uh, staff, where are the bathrooms? And hopefully they can point them to you. You should be also able to find the bathrooms based off the information board map. So you're gonna head over to the bathrooms and see if they're open and available to 
marina tenants and visitors to the marina. And then you wanna head into the bathroom. You wanna to check to see if they have hand washing soap available as well as towels or paper towel. This is particularly important this year with COVID-19. People need a place to be able to wash their hands. So we wanna make sure that those are working. And then you wanna check the bathroom and the shower or change room area to, to see if it's regularly cleaned. And then take a photo of the area and give your rating as to whether it's been recently cleaned or could use a, uh, some more cleaning. And then you're gonna to wanna to check to see if the facilities are accessible for persons with a phys physical disability. So this is really important. Blue flag criteria really highlights having accessible waterfront spaces, beaches and marinas included. So we really wanna emphasize this. We wanna make sure that people can access all the areas within the marina. And then you wanna to check to see if there's a reasonable number of bathrooms and showers available. So if there's huge lines at the bathrooms, it might mean that there's not enough toilets available. So that's something you would flag, but if you can easily go in and out, you're not waiting for longer than 10 minutes, then we would um, assume there's enough facilities available. Then you'd have a look around and see if there's a water fountain or a place where people can fill up their water bottles. In some places, this may be covered due to COVID-19 if sanitation can't occur uh, properly at the, at the water fountain. That's okay, we've conferred with Blue Flag International, they can cover them and that's up to the discretion of the marina manager. And then you wanna give your rating as to whether these facilities are easy to find. So if you take 10 minutes trying to find the toilet, they're likely not easy to find. They should be able to locate relatively easily when you're in the marina itself. And then you're going to want to uh, check to see if the marina has a boat repairing or washing area. Not, on, not all marinas will have this. A lot of the blue flag marinas are small marinas, so they won't have an area for washing or repairing, which is fine. It's not imperative that they have one. But if they do have one, it's a bigger marina, then you're going to want to check this area to make sure that there's no pollution from this area entering into the water or onto the ground near the water. This could be a source of pollution for the water, especially if they're painting the boats or doing any repairs to uh, any part that contains fuel or the toilet tanks as well. And then you want, if there is a repairing or washing area, we want to make sure that the repairing activities for large, large boats where you're maybe repainting a whole hull are taking place undercover or indoors. So not directly outside and not near the water. And before we move on, I'm gonna uh, quickly break again. And Sadie, do we have any questions that have come in? So far, we don't have any other questions, but feel free to hop into the chat right now if you do have any, and we'll sort of take a minute, have a sip of water, <laughs> and then um, if we don't have any questions come in in the next 30 seconds or so, we can move on. Sounds great. Yeah, I hope you're all really excited about the, the chance to get to go visit a marina and uh, conduct these site visits. Um, if you're also interested in doing a, a beach visit or if you just wanted to get the training, I'll be sending also the videos for, for the beach training so you can catch up on that as well because there, there are some differences in terms of the, which sites you're visiting. Okay, so far, no other questions. So I think that we'll, we'll continue along, but feel free to use that chat box at any point. Perfect. Thank you, Sadie. So now we're into the final category for blue flag marinas, and that is safety and services. All the criteria are really important, but this one is also very important. This makes sure that we uh, reduce the risk of people drowning or any fires occurring at the marina. So you're going to want to check that the marina is equipped with life-saving equipment. So what does this mean? Life-saving equipment is, includes uh, life rings that you can see here. Right here, this is a life ring. It would also be a life hook. Uh, all marina docks and the fingers have to have ladders on them. So this is so in case someone falls in off their boat or uh, falls in off the dock, there is a place where they can easily get out of the water. So part of blue flag criteria, they must have ladders installed on the docks. And then you're going to want to check to see, is there enough to serve the whole marina? 
So typically every dock must have life-saving equipment on it. Uh, if there's any docks without any life-saving equipment, this we would deem this as not having enough to serve the whole marina because any boats docked on that dock without life-saving equipment wouldn't be able to use it in case they fell in the water. You want to check to see if the life-saving equipment is really easy to locate. It should be brightly colored. There should typically be signage uh, on how to use the equipment as well. So if it's easy to find and you locate it right away, say yes, it's easy to locate. If it takes you any longer than five minutes to find the equipment, that likely means that it's not easy to find. So what you want to keep in mind is that if you are someone visiting the marina, you're new to it, and something happens and you need to get the equipment, you need to find that right away in order to help the person who's in distress. So five minutes is too long, it needs to be 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes to be able to find it. So you want to keep that in mind when you're out checking the marina. You want to check if it's working. So if there's no string on the life ring, if the hook, the life hook is bent, if, the P, if there's a PDF that's torn apart or the clips aren't working, this equipment isn't working, it's not going to be effective to save someone who's in distress in the water. So you want to make sure that it's working. The equipment must also be available 24 hours a day. So it can't be locked at night. People need to be able to access it at all hours. There are people who live at marinas on their boats. So people are there 24 seven and must have access to the equipment 24 seven. And then you wanna check with staff at the marina that there's an emergency phone near the marina, either in the office or available at the docks. And then you wanna to check to see if this emergency phone is at a reasonable distance from the marina. So again, you wanna think about if there is an emergency happening in the water on one of the boats uh, and someone needs help right away, how long does it take you to get to that phone? If you don't have your cell phone or your cell phone's dead, you wanna make sure that it's no longer than five minutes to get to that emergency phone. So keep that in mind when you're checking this criteria. And this goes also for first aid equipment. Typically first aid equipment would be available in the marina office so you'd head into the marine office and, and ask, oh, where's your first aid equipment? And then ask nicely to see it because we want to make sure that it's in working order and it has everything inside it that you might need. And then you'd ask, is this available 24 seven? Can people come get the first aid at any point or is there certain times that it's available? Another really, really important aspect at marinas because there are boats with fuel in them um, very flammable substances used at marinas is, is there firefighting equipment at the marina? So this is, an, a this is a fire extinguisher here. It is a locked box, but you can see those lines on that glass. That can be easily broken if there is a fire. There should be fire extinguishers on every dock, especially near the fueling area. And it also has to be available 24 hours a day. So if it's taken away or locked at night, this is not deemed part of blue flag criteria. People need to be able to access this at any point in time because there are tenants who live there 24 seven. So if something happens at night, they need to be able to access this equipment. And then you're gonna wanna see it if there's a fueling station at the marina. Not all marinas have a fueling station. So this is to fill your boat up with gas. Typically it's on a cement block far away from the other docks. Then you're gonna wanna check to see if it's fire guarded. So fire guarding means it's strategically placed and there's planned barriers intended to stop or slow the rate or spread of fire by breaking the fuel available to the fire. So fueling stations are typically like a gas station on cement blocks within the water and not made of wood. If it is made of wood, it should be treated wood that is non-flammable. And then you wanna check to see if there's electricity and water available at each berth. So when I'm speaking about berth, this is where boats are docked. So you have the main dock and then you have smaller docks that are called fingers that stick out from the main dock. And between these fingers, boats will come and dock. And they'll typically, if they're bigger bo boats, be able to hook up to the electricity at the dock or also the water. So you wanna make sure that there's electricity and water available at every berth for any big boats that might be docking. Uh, typically the water is comes out of a hose and then the electricity is in a black box and you'll see outlets and plugs that, that the boat's able to plug into. 
they should be pretty obvious, but if you have any trouble finding them at all, if this is the first time you're visiting a marina, staff members can definitely help you locate these things. And then another really important thing we want to re-emphasize this is that blue flag criteria emphasizes accessibility for everyone. Um, and so we wanna make sure that there's accessible parking available at the marina. And then we also wanna see if the facilities themselves are accessible to persons with a physical disability. So if the docks don't have ramps or there's stairs or there's something impeding someone in a wheelchair from getting onto the docks, this is something you want to flag to us. Typically marinas are accessible, um, but if they aren't, you definitely wanna let us know. And that actually brings us to the end. Uh, the time it takes to conduct a control visit depends on the size of the marina, obviously, and how easy it is to find any of the requirements. So again, if it's taking you more than 90 minutes, it likely means that some of the requirements are hard to find. And that might be a sign that the public also would have a hard time finding the items that are supposed to be easy to find. So you want to keep that in mind when you're conducting your control visit. If you are really struggling to find the items, you'll have my phone number and email so you can always give me a call. Um, and then any staff at the marina will also be able to help you. So now we're going to go into questions again. We've gone through a lot, so feel free to ask any questions. But if, if you don't, I'll take that as a sign that hopefully I've done a good job explaining things. And if anything comes up after, you can always send us an email. But Sadie, do we have any questions? So, so far we don't have any questions. Um, if you feel like you, you aren't going to come up with any questions, why don't we just you go ahead and use the chat box and just give us a, a no questions uh, so, that, so that we know. But also feel free to take your time if you're thinking of something and uh, you're just not quite sure how to phrase it yet. Okay, no questions from Finn. And of course, you're allowed to have questions later on. You have both of our emails here, so feel free to reach out um, if something comes up later on. Okay, no questions from Shade. Perfect. All right, and we do have a question from Kendall. When doing the site visit, will we have a checklist with everything on it? So that is an excellent question. Yes, you will. Um, here, I think because you had trouble getting on, I'll just send you the link here. So this is the example of the Blue Flag Marina Control Visit form. So it's a Google form that you just sort of fill out on uh, your cell phone. If you have a smartphone, um, we can also give you a printed out version that you sort of check along as you go if you don't have a smartphone. And so that way all of the questions are are already listed and super easy for you to access. Elise, do you have anything else to add? No, yeah, that form is um, what you'll use and it also automatically uploads once you start um, filling it out. You can go back, you'll be able to go back and edit it. So if you do need to change anything, that's not a big deal. You get home and you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. You can go right back in and edit anything um, that you need to edit. And then we'll confirm with you once we receive the, the uh, form and your answers. And we'll follow up if we have any questions. The logistics for the next step, if we don't have any questions, would be uh, next week, Sadie and I are meeting up on Tuesday to, uh, to assign everyone their site. And then we'll follow up via email. And we'll also put you in directly in contact with the site manager so you won't be expected to coordinate that communication in any way, we'll help set all of that up and then select the day that works for everyone to go and do the control visit. And if you wanna do multiple control visits at different places, that's also uh, um, a great thing to do. I'll flip back to the presentation. Um, we do, as Kendall, we spoke to a little bit, there aren't blue flags all across Canada. So there are places where there aren't any. So if you're near uh, a municipality that has a beautiful marina or even a beautiful beach that you think meets blue flag criteria, you can definitely use this form as well to let us um, know that you think that this marina could be a good option for a blue flag. 
So if you don't have a blue flag in your area, that doesn't mean you can't help us out. There are ways to help us out and find new blue flag beaches and marinas elsewhere. Sadie, do you have anything to add? Because you know a lot of uh, where where we might need some blue flags or... Uh, yeah, you know, Kendall, since, since you're located um, out west here, we, yeah, just please feel free to, to send me an email and uh, I... I think we do have some sites already listed, but if anyone else who's watching this uh, is in another area, please also send me an email with your location and we can see if we already know of any sites nearby, or maybe you've already spent so much time by a beach or marina that you know it very well. Oh, there are so many incredible places, uh, beaches and marinas across Canada that might meet these standards already and maybe they just don't even know about Blue Flag yet and maybe they really benefit from applying to this program. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and we'd also, if you, um, if there's, uh, there, there are some areas that are a little bit more popular than others in terms of marinas. Uh, uh, there are two sites where we have uh, less signups. So if you are able to make it to the Grand Bend Marina in municipality of Land and Shores, please let us know, or as well as the Halifax waterfront, though it seems like it's probably a ways from most of you. Um, so we'd like to also just give a big thank you for, for spending the time to watch the videos and attend our workshop today. And just generally, thank you so much for your interest in Swim, Drink, Fish and the Blue Flag Canada program. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions via email. And uh, I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, Sadie. And yes, thank you all so much. And have a lovely evening. Yeah, so Elise and I will stay on. If you did have any last questions that you'd like to, to pose, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone and we'll do our best to answer them. But if not, uh, just enjoy the rest of your day. And we're really looking forward to having you uh, conduct your site visits. Just please remember that this is really important work and this is a crucial step for, for us to ensure that these sites are meeting the standards. And that is a really important step for us to ensure a swimmable, drinkable and fishable future for all.